Hi, hi, hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, so earlier today I was talking about how my legs are wrecked, um, thanks to some sleuthing by my partner and looking around online. I've pretty much determined that it's, um, it's tendonitis, uh, in my, uh, Achilles heel and my tendon, um, because, as it turns out, that's exacerbated by walking up a lot of stairs. And wouldn't you know it, there are a ton of stairs in Japan. So many stairs. Like, every single station has a thousand stairs. And there are sometimes escalators, um, but sometimes it's a little difficult to find the escalators or to find the elevators where there might be a line. Um, but anyway, don't when or if you come to Japan, don't be a hero. Don't take all the stairs. You might get tendonitis. It might ruin your night trying to get to Harajuku and to Shibuya. Yeah, but I wound up um, icing my leggies, and by icing I mean using my uh, refrigerated coffee and putting it on my leg, and it helped enough um, because this is my last night in Tokyo before before going to Kyoto, and I really, really, really wanted to go to some one place in particular. Um, one, I do love seeing all the different cities and getting to experience the um, like different different things in each city, but. Uh, in Harajuku, there's a place I've been wanting to go to since I was like 15, um, and I finally did that tonight, and I'm so happy. It was so worth it. I didn't do much else because my legs hurt so bad. Oh, but thankfully I'll be able to rest them a little bit on the Shin Kansen tomorrow. So, uh, what I did today after I iced my legs is first I had to go exchange um, my Japanese rail pass voucher so I could ride the Shikansen. Uh, you can just buy Shikansen tickets um, normally through any JR rail station or you can do it online before you leave. I like to do everything before I leave just to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row in case anything happens. Um, but anyways, fine. The line seemed easy. I saw tons of uh, foreign visitors buying their tickets in line, but I bought mine ahead of time with my Suica card and my SIM card for my phone through Docomo, which is one of the largest networks here. So, this is the, um, the voucher for the Japanese Rail Pass. You purchase it. It does seem a little expensive, and by seem, I mean it is expensive but it turns out Shinkansen tickets are very expensive, like hundreds of dollars for one trip. Um, yeah. But the Japanese Rail Pass is a program where you can pay to get unlimited rides on the Shinkansen or JR Rail lines. Um, and it's only available to people who have a temporary visitor status. So, highly recommend taking advantage of this because you can go anywhere. And you can even use it on the local JR trains too, and save your Suica money. Yeah, so totally worth it. I actually did the calculations. There's some websites that also help you do the calculations to see if um, paying for it would be worth it, and it was definitely worth it, especially because I'm going to Kyoto. You have to pay for the ticket there and the ticket back, which is at least $300 minimum for a round trip. This, for two weeks, is about $400. Um, again, expensive, but it's pretty worth it because I'm also going to be going to Osaka and a couple other places as well. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for the rail pass, um, or it would have been more expensive. So, uh, when you get this, it's just a voucher. Before you ride on the Shinkansen, you have to um, turn it into a JR rail line. There are only certain places you can do this, but to find them, it's pretty easy. You just have to look for every single like JR rail station box where they can help you is green. It is like bright green, and it has like a little picture of a person helping someone. It says like JR rail office very easy to spot, but they aren't in every single station, 
They're only at certain stations. It is all listed online. You can even just Google, like, um, Japanese rail pass, like, where to redeem or something, and it will list, like, every single station. Most major busy stations have one. I went to the, uh, Shibuya one because I wanted to go to Harajuku, um, and it worked out really well. The, the Shinjuku station and the Tokyo station, um, like, the main station so busy. The lines were so long last time I walked by them, so I would actually try going to one of the many, many um, places that aren't Shinjuku or the main Tokyo station. Yeah. So, when I turned in my voucher, uh, two things happened. I had to just fill out a really quick and easy form. It took like seconds make sure you bring your passport because you need your passport to prove that you are a temporary visitor you fill out a thingy and then they give you this lovely jr real pass book it has a whole bunch of info in it for you including a lovely map but also ta-da! here's your jr real pass so i just like flash this to the uh to the people when i want to go in and i can use as many Shinkansens as I want now. If I wanted to, like, take a Shinkansen to Hokkaido one day, I could do that and then just write it right back. It would be a couple hours, but that is totally an option, which I find thrilling. Who knows? I might do it. Um, uh, and, um, so I got a two-week rail pass because I'm here for two weeks. Um, and I'm going back and forth for the fellowship for for two weeks. So so that's why I got that one. You can get a week one, two weeks, and then I think like a month or something like that. I don't think there's a three week one. So uh, you can just like walk right onto the Shikansen or make a reservation like day of. I might I made mine a day ahead of time. Um, so you can go in again to those JR Rail offices or just to whatever station a Shikansen leaves out of um, and say you need a reservation. Almost all of them speak pretty good English. Um, so they make a reservation for you. I recommend if you are going to Tokyo or Kyoto or Osaka, reserve a seat on the right hand side of the train because the train goes kind of like down and around I think past like Hakone, um, but you get to see Fuji-san, Mount Fuji. So you go like right past it, and if you're on the right side of the train, Mount Fuji's right here, and you get to like watch it fly by, which is super cool. Um, uh, there weren't any seats left on that side of the train when I reserved it. I could have pushed my reservation time back, but I have a dinner that night, and I, I always, again, when I'm going to new places, I leave myself, like, at least two hours, at least. I know for a fact Kyoto is a very, very, very busy station, um, because I googled it. Uh, and so, given my previous experiences with anxiety in certain stations, I, um, wanted to leave a little early, again, because I have a meeting that night, so leave myself, like, a pretty big buffer because uh, the shikansen is two hours to get to kyoto which is actually super fast super fast it's a very very fast train i'm really excited slash terrified oh reminder on my computer um okay so here's here's my shikansen ticket here it is so i just show this to the gate um, you get a specific reservation time so mine is at 12 30 tomorrow checkout is 11 here so I will go to the Tokyo station at 12.30 and get on the Hikari 471. It tells you exactly what train you get on, um, exactly what time, and then what car you're in and what seat you're in. And the Shikansen seats I've heard, I haven't experienced it yet, um, but I guess I'll update you later. So the Shikansen trains, like, because they go both ways, right? You don't want to be, like, riding backwards on a train. Some people might. Um, that would make me totally sick, I'm sure. Oh, speaking of, I need to remember to take Dramamine, maybe, or at least have it with me. Uh, I also brought, like, these really cool barf bags with me, too, because I get really sick on public transportation, so I ordered some, like, fancy special ones. I love them. Uh, anyway, if you have that problem, 
let me know. I'll show you which ones I ordered. I don't think I have them laying around. Oh, it's over there. That's, that's too far to reach. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so the seats, like, can move. They can, like, flip around and stuff like that. So I'll figure that out once I get on the train. I get to sit in the sweet seat. So this is it. Have this when you go to the gate. Have your ticket. And then you get on the Shikansen to get it. Make sure you have your real pass, your passport. You're good to go. They're so friendly, really easy. So, so yeah. So, because I had to go do that, even though my legs are hurting so bad, um, I decided to go to Harajuku because Harajuku is very close to Shibuya, just right there. Um, you can take a little local train and it takes like five minutes, maybe less, real fast. Uh, and I knew I wasn't going to be doing much walking around um, because I only wanted to go to one place in particular. I might go back to Harajuku, we'll see. Mm, it turns out, like again, I love experiencing it and I think I actually would have loved it a lot more if I would have gone uh, when I was younger. So maybe when I was a teen or in my early 20s, I would have loved Harajuku. Like, I really loved it now. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, I've always been so fascinated with it. It is a little bit different than it was in the early 2000s, um, when, like, the Fruits magazine, if you're familiar with that, um, and Harajuku culture was, like, like, um, maybe the stereotype that Americans have of it now. It was, like, pre-Gwen Stefani capitalizing on it type of stuff. Um, it's a little different now, you know, tourists um, tend to uh, exploit some things in Harajuku. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into that. That's that's a whole thing. You can Google it. There's or even um there's some good research articles on uh, exploitation in Harajuku. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, there was, there was a little bit of dressing up, um, not as intense as it used to be, uh, but some of this, the stores were still really, really cool. Some of, like, the original stores are still there, some of the original designers are still there. It was really great to look at, but as, I don't, I don't know, now, I guess I'm, I'm just less into consuming, I suppose, now, so... Even though I was looking around and I'd like really love to have a shirt or something to wear as a souvenir from Tokyo and from Harajuku, I would love it so much. Um, one, I'm a potato and it's hard to wear anything. Uh, just like not a whole lot feels comfortable or looks great. I'm like kind of picky a little bit. Um, yeah, and I'm, I already get like nervous when I when I buy stuff, but also, uh, you know, I'm just not super into consumerism that much. I try not to, like, to do that too much when I'm traveling. I try to focus on, um, like, the experience and immersing myself in, like, the, the culture and learning a whole bunch of stuff. And that's, that's not, like, humble bragging or saying that people don't do that or are, like, bad or anything like that. That's not at all. It's just my personal preference. Um, yeah, because I feel like it, was just, it would just clutter up my house, and then I wouldn't, like, appreciate it as much, you know? So if I'm going to get something, it's going to be, like, really special that I'm going to love, love, love. Um, yeah. So, but I did, I did buy a couple things. I did. I consumed a little bit, and I will show you, I will show you. I actually bought um, a couple presents to bring back to everybody. I'm Now that I'm starting to get rid of some of my omiyage for the people I've been visiting, I have a lot more space in the bag, especially since I only brought a couple shirts, so I'm dedicating a whole entire side of my large luggage to bringing back presents for everybody, because uh, that makes me more happy. I love bringing back things for people. I love, like, people getting to try new things from a different place. Yeah. So, um doing that. So I got some, you know, Kit Kats. It was the most requested item from everybody. And a couple other things. I went to the Kelby store, if you're familiar with Kelby. Um, there's a popular store in Harajuku. Kelby makes like these 
really delicious chips in Japan. They're so good. So they make like regular chips that are kind of like ruffles, except they're like way better than ruffles. Oh my gosh, I love Kelby chips. And they have like all sorts of great flavors, like, like everything in Japan. Um, but they also make like crispy potato sticks. Oh, they're like french fries, but not fresh. They're like potato chip french fries. They're so good. They're so good. So you can go to the store and get like fresh ones made. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I posted on my Instagram, maybe. I went to the Calbi store and I got some of their chips and I've been wanting to try these particular chips for so long. They have a lot of really great flavors and I kind of want to go back and try some more, but they have, um, they're regular chips, they're flat chips, and they drizzle chocolate on it and put a little side of ice cream and you like eat the chips with chocolate and ice cream. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was so good. I like love salty and savory stuff. Um, yeah, and I already like dip french fries and potato chips and stuff in ice cream, so yeah, it was so good. It was so good. Um, Anyway, so I got some um, presents to bring back for everyone. Some Calbi chips, uh, right from the Calbi store. Uh, oh, the bag is like taped shut. I'm not gonna bother opening that now. But I got some pretty cool boxes. I got a um, uh, limited edition Harajuku box of Calbi chips. I don't know what that means, but it was colorful and it had a really it had their cute mascot on it, which is like a little um, giraffe uh, because giraffe. Or at least this is what I think. I think it's because the giraffe's neck is long and like their their chips look like french fries and they're yellow and long. So like it looks like a giraffe. I might have just made that up. I'm gonna like guess that that's maybe why, but who knows. Like also gi giraffes are just really popular and cute. Uh, yeah. So I got some of those presents. I also um, went into a uh, 100 yen store, which is like a dollar store. They were very popular in Japan. And they're like our dollar stores, except infinitely better. Speaking of consumerism, they have such good stuff. So I picked up a couple things, um, but I just, I got them really quickly just to show you. And then I might get a couple others to bring back for some people because, so, one, I have read about, and two, I have now witnessed that Japanese beauty products are really, 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 um, like, sought after and popular. Yeah, there are huge stores dedicated to, like, a lot, a lot of, like, the beauty industry, um, specifically with, like, skincare and also skin whitening yeah again i'm not gonna make a video about that because this is for the horner fellowship but um i have thoughts um and colorism is an issue in Japan, very well-known issue, so there are quite a lot of skin lightening products here. Um, I saw a couple today that were Doraemon and Hello Kitty skin whitening creams. So Doraemon is this really cute, if you weren't familiar, very cute like blue cat with a pocket on his stomach and it's a dimensional pocket. It's a really popular show with like children, school children, because he can like pull out anything out of his pocket. He's super helpful and like really cute. Um, and y you know, you know Hello Kitty. Um, Amy, skin lightning stuff. It's Hello Kitty and Doraemon. Yeah. But enough of that. Um, I wanted to show you these things. Wait a minute. I had something else. I was, no, I don't know how to bring that up on the screen. Whatever. So, uh, face masks, like skincare product face masks, face masks are very, very, very popular in Japan. Super popular. 
they're in like every single dollar store, every single store that I've been to. Um, and apparently this is one of the most popular ones. Lululun. Um, so I'm going to bring back a couple of these for those of you at home who really enjoy skincare and uh, beauty products and stuff. I don't know anything about like, like nothing next to nothing. Um, but I know these are really popular and they're pretty cute. I'm going to bring back some like, they have like Pokemon face masks and, and all sorts of stuff. And then some of them are for, they aren't just for women. They're only marketed towards women, but y'all know what I mean. <laughs> Anyone can bring, can have these when they come back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to bring these back for everyone. Um, and there's also a couple that are um, supposed to be for like relaxation and and stuff like that. I I guess I haven't I haven't done a whole ton of research on them. Anyway, Lululun is that very very popular they're super squishy hmm. and so these aren't for me i just want i these ones were cheap they were like two yen and so i bought two of them because i wanted to show you this one is super interesting so again like anime is everywhere here as one would expect but um it's also used to like market a lot of products and like it's so deeply ubiquitous like everywhere it's everywhere every single advertisement has anime like there's anime mascots for things you wouldn't even imagine um as many of you who are fans of anime my hero academia is very popular in the states it is very popular here there are so many like billboards and signs and companies like using it to advertise their products i don't really know how that works but i'm super interested in like uh, that copy copyright like is everyone buying the rights to my hero academia to market like their rando products like it's used to market everything like like school crossing guards are associated with like certain anime and stuff like that it's it's interesting anyway that was a setup to show you this this is another face mask, and one, I love it because they are, like, crying. I love it so much. So this is actually from an anime called The Rose of Versailles. Very popular anime. At least it was in, like, a while ago. I watched this when I was young, I think. I love it. I think I was watching it around the same time as like Sailor Moon and um, uh, Revolution Revolutionary Girl Utena. Anyway, Rose of Versailles. The artist is uh, Ryoko Ikeda and her art is really really ubiquitous. So speaking of advertisements, it's used to advertise these very special like manga shoujo which is like manga for girls uh face masks yeah and then shonen is like manga for boys so think like naruto and one piece and dragon ball z and stuff yeah so oh, the light <clears throat> so anyway uh i got this because it's like really extra <laughs> look at it's so extra in a way that I like love. <laughs> yes, but also I love Rose of Versailles. Um, so clearly this worked on me. Uh, speaking of other advertising and other anime being used for stuff that totally works on me, even though I'm like, I'm not a consumer. Oh my gosh, such a hypocrite. Anyway. I love, based on my, my two recommendations right now, you're probably going to guess, like, some of the anime I might watch. I actually watch, like, a ridiculous amount of anime, um, but these two are going to make it seem like I watch a very particular type of anime. Uh, so I found this lip balm, and I do, I love chapstick. I love chapstick because, you know, whose lips don't get chapped? so useful and also it smells so lovely 
and also it like tastes so lovely like strawberries anyway I love chapstick um so I found this this is a sailor moon lip balm look at it oh my gosh this is so cool so cool like I am so excited for this now as an adult Man, if I would have got something like this as like a teen, oh, I would have cherished it for my whole life. I guarantee you I would still have it. This is so cool. And there were other ones too. There was a Sailor Mini Moon one, but I don't really like Sailor Mini Moon. Um, and I don't really like her compact as much as the other Sailor Scouts, so I didn't, I didn't get that one. But this one's my favorite. I love it so much. And then there was also like the heart with a little crown on it. For those of you who watch Sailor Moon or have seen Sailor Moon, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, this is the lip balm. I'm so excited. Uh, if anyone else wants one, I know like a couple people for sure. I'm gonna bring back one too. And this was like, like three yen, three dollars. I think it's a little expensive, but I'm okay with that. Look at how beautiful this is. Ugh go fight crime with that. Okay, so, oh, let me show you some of the Kit Kats I got that I'm gonna bring back. I got some, like, you know, ones that you would expect might be in Japan, but I also got a really cool one that I'm excited to bring back to everyone. So there's this one. This is sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are very, very popular in Japan, as you probably saw from my Instagram, I've been taking a picture of all the sweet potato things. It's basically their pumpkin spice latte. It's so good. I love sweet potato stuff. I think I had a sweet potato thing today. Um, I got a couple green tea ones, some matcha ones, right? Of course, of course I would bring these back. These are the most popular flavor. Yeah. And what's this one? And a chestnut Kit Kat. Chestnuts are also very popular. There's a ton of chestnut flavored stuff around here. Tons. Especially in like cafes. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I get hiccups a lot. And also I ate like a lot this evening. I still haven't even talked about that. It's our, it's 27 minutes right now. These are just getting longer. Okay, this is the most interesting one. I'm bringing you all back a sake flavored Kit Kat. Yeah. I don't know what sake smells like. I don't know why I'm trying to smell this, but here you go. So I'm bringing this back for those of you who like it. I think it might be like peach. Mm, yeah, that looks like a peach. Yeah. So these are for some of you. And then of course the Kelby chips. Uh, I totally forgot to talk about the reason I went to Harajuku and then I just got on that like little tangent about consumerism and then just showed you a whole bunch of things that I, I bought, so too late to go back. Anyway, uh, speaking of the other consumerism that I did today, the reason I wanted to go to Harajuku is because there is a cafe there that I've been wanting to go to for so long. It's called the, it's called the Pom Pom Purin Cafe. <laughs> And it's a- Pom Pom Burn is a Sanrio character. Um, it's like a really cute, fat dog that wears like a little hat, like a hat. Um, but he's called Pom Pom Purin because Purin is- Purin is pudding. Yeah, so he's supposed to look like a little pudding, like these popular puddings in Japan that are so good. They're so good that- Oh, I have, I have such an addiction to, like, sweet things. I love sweet things. So Japan has been such a problem and a blessing all at the same time. I get these little puddings from the 7-Eleven every night. Oh, they're so good. Anyway, so Pum Pum Purin looks like a pudding. And so there is a themed cafe all for Pum Pum Purin. And everything is Pum Pum Purin themed. And so when you go in, you get, like, this special food. All of the food is like so cute and beautiful and looks just like Pom Pom Purin. Maybe I can show you the pictures on my phone. But I also posted them on Instagram, so 
I'm just gonna keep talking while I try to find the pom pom perm pictures. Oh, I found them already. That was really fast. So I got, they had a Halloween themed menu. So for those of you who I've never met, I love Halloween. I love Halloween so much, so much. It is the best holiday. I love it. I live for Halloween. I live for October. Halloween is wonderful. I love dressing up. I love costumes. And I really love candies and and spooky things. Oh, it's like all the things that I love. So there is a Halloween themed menu, which is like the greatest thing that could have ever happened in the Pom Pom Burn Cafe. Um, so let me show you the entrance to the Pom Pom Burn Cafe first. So mm, you're not going to be able to see this very well. That's kind of it. So you, like, you go through little entrance. It's really cute. It was on the third floor of some, like, shop. That's another thing. So in Japan, everything is in, like, basements and second floors and third floors, like, everywhere. So unless a staircase is blocked off, like, always just go in staircases because most of the best places are not on ground level. Like, a lot of the really awesome stuff is underground. Okay, let me show you, like, the amazing food that I ate. So, Italian food is very, very, very popular in Japan. Maybe because of the noodles? I'm not really sure. Or the pasta? They really love pasta. Um, so I got this Italian meal that actually was really good. It's not like anything I've ever tasted, but it was delicious. But it didn't matter because I got it. Oh my gosh! Because it's so cute. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So it's Papa Pern and the little radishes were cut in the shape of bats and witch hats. And the little, the other radishes were little ghosts. Oh, it was so cute. And it tasted delicious too. It was a little expensive, but, um, there's a couple things I'm willing to spend money on. Because I usually just, like, don't. And eating is one of them. I've said it before, I love food so much. So I'm okay with consuming when it comes to like literally consuming a thing. Like eating it. I love food. I'm totally, totally okay spending money on food. Um, other things? Meh. Okay. Okay, so that was my dinner. I didn't eat all day. One, because my legs hurt so much that I had to like abandon lunch. Um, so this is perfect. So I ate that wonderful spaghetti, and then, oh my gosh, and then I got a dessert too. Oh, it was like an ice cream, it had bananas, and there was a pudding on top, and on top of the pudding was a cookie, and there was ice cream on the sides, and brownie. Oh my god, it was so good. So you can see these pictures a little bit better on my Instagram. Oh, so delicious. And as I was in this cafe, so um, sometimes when you go out to eat, uh, usually it depends on where you go, but if you say, oh, uh, uh, like one person, please, um, they'll, they'll kind of, uh, uh, nobody, nobody's rude, but they'll be like, a little confused, like you're eating, you're eating alone, why? Um, but I don't mind eating alone, I actually kind of love eating, eating alone, because I can eat whatever I want. Um, so I wasn't the only person eating alone there, which is lovely, but as I was eating, um, two Americans came in and they saw my dessert came out first, they were like, oh, that's so cute, and I was like, isn't it so cute? And we started talking, I was like, where are you from? They were like, Arizona, and I was like, what? And it turns out, um, the, the girl that was there with her mom, the woman that was there with her mom, goes to ASU. Yeah, she's an ASU student. She just graduated. So I was so excited for her. It was really great. We talked about Hayden Library. She's been in Japan for a couple months because she really loves it and she's doing some traveling after she graduated. It was really awesome. So I like talked to them. They got the same dessert. We talked for a little bit. It was great. So I keep running into like so many awesome people here. Like people from Arizona, people from California. I ran into some people from California when I was at that like food festival thing that got rained out and then my poor legs. Yeah, it's been super awesome. 
So even though I didn't do a whole ton today in Harajuku, except for going to the Pump Pump Burn Cafe, which was totally worth it. I loved it so much. Um, I didn't get a crepe though. Uh, uh, for those of you not familiar with Harajuku, they're really well known, one, for desserts and candy, oh my goodness, but especially for their uh, crepe, crepes, like, mm, I don't know how to explain them. You just have to google like Harajuku crepes, they are next level. But by that point I had eaten so many sweet things that like, oh, I'm gonna have to go back. I can't, I can't leave Japan without eating a Harajuku crepe, I might just like go and get a crepe there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did some other stuff today, like see the Hachiko statue, statue which is a, like a statue of a, a little Shiba Inu dog. Um, near Shinjuku, Shib Shibuya, Shibuya Station, um, the dog was moralized because it was really loyal to its owner, um, there's a lot more to that story, but, you know, Google it, it's already 36 minutes into this video, uh, and then I went to the Scramble Crossing in, uh, Shibuya, it was, you know, it was how you would expect, it was very scrambly, I felt very nervous, cars did not mess around. If you did not get across that thing, they would just like go for it anyway. Yeah, I did a lot of stuff, but Pom Pom Purin, definitely the highlight. Love Pom Pom Purin Cafe. Um, if you love those types of things, like really kawaii, Sanrio type stuff, 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Food was great. Food was cute. It was wonderful. Okay, got some presents. Use my freaking awesome lip balm. Yeah. So anyway, I'm off to Kyoto tomorrow. I'll try to take some uh, videos of flying along on the Shinkansen, and then the next time I make a video, I'll be in Kyoto. So hopefully, I can do some really cool stuff there. And the I think I'm there three days. Hopefully, my leggies will be better. Yeah. Anyway. Hope you're all having a good day, having a good uh, weekend. I think it's going to be Sunday for you today, so have a good end to the weekend. Okay, bye, 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 see you later, bye.